Welcome, everyone, to Midday Magazine for this Friday, March 29th, 2024. I have your host, James J. Mailoff here. And, um, oh, don't need the headphones. Uh, you're okay. Don't worry about it. You're fine. Uh, we have in studio with us some of our favorite people. We have Sharon Schwab with us. Sharon, good morning. Good morning. Or, good afternoon, I should say. <laughs> uh, and thanks for being here, Sharon. And we have Mary Casey Martin with us. Mary, good to see you. Hey, just call me Casey. Just Casey, yep. <laughs> I, uh, I appreciate both of you being here. Really appreciate everything that you do with the Wisconsin Prairie Chicken Festival. Uh, I think it's one of our cooler, fun events we have in our area. It's something we love to highlight and get a chance to do every year with you bo- you two in. And one thing I'd like to do for those that may be new to the area or maybe haven't heard of this before, um, they kind of get in the history of the event a little bit. Uh, and if you don't mind, I will put you on the spot, Sharon, with that. <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, Sharon, can we share a little bit of the history of this great event. Oh, sure. Um, well, I think Casey and I, uh, Casey might have started with the cockamamie <laughs> idea back in like 2006. Mm. And back in 2006, we had a very small event actually at the Hammerstrom home, mm. which is located near Plainfield. Mm-hmm. And so we um, had an event all outside and a little bit of the inside where we toured the Hammerstrom home. And I can let you expound on that. But And then from there, it just built. We started in 2007 through about 2012, and it just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So we had events then at the Buena Vista Wildlife Area, at the Paul J. Olson Wildlife Area, at the Mead Wildlife Area. Mm -hmm. We had things out at the historic um, Bass. Mm -hmm. We had Oh, my goodness. At one point, we had, I think, like 11 different venues, and we had, I think, more than 120 people that we fit into observation blinds over the course of a weekend. Hmm. And they come from all over All over the world, all over the world, literally. Mm. We had people from China. Mm. Um, We took about, there was about a five-year hiatus. There were personnel changes and some of the programming and personnel um, left the Mm -hmm. program. And so we kicked up again in 2017, and we renamed it, rebranded it as the Wisconsin Prairie Chicken Festival. Yeah. And we have a new website. Mm. Um, It's www.wisprairiechickens.com. Dot org. Ah, okay. So the W I S mm-hmm. is important and chickens plural. Mm-hmm. Dot org. And that uh, new site will give people an overview on the schedule. It'll mm-hmm. give them a way to interact via an email. There's a Facebook link. And mm-hmm. So a lot of good news. And I'm glad you brought up the Facebook page. There's also the Facebook page for people to keep in mind, too, that like and subscribe to and uh, keep up to date on everything you guys are doing over there. Um, so uh, thank you for the history lesson. I loved hearing that, mm-hmm. and I love going down memory lane with you guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, why the prairie chicken? What, what was it about the prairie chicken that we wanted to do this for the prairie chicken? Well, prairie chickens have a storied history in the state of Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. Um, They used to be uh, historically only in the southern third part of the state of Wisconsin where Mm -hmm. we had a lot of prairie. Mm -hmm. Of course, a lot of land loose changes have occurred. And when the state of Wisconsin was logged back in the 1800s, we had wide open spaces almost everywhere. Mm -hmm. At one point, there were prairie chickens in every single county of Wisconsin. Wow. Uh, But like a lot of species, they were hunted to near extinction. Mm -hmm. And hunting in Wisconsin was ceased in 1955. Mm -hmm. However, there still was a stronghold left in central Wisconsin where we had a lot of open area. So, um, and about five different counties, Marathon, Wood, Clark, uh, Portage, and Adams were really the strongholds. And Mm. those still exist today, but only really in parts of Wood and Portage County Mm. at the three main wildlife areas, Paul Olson, Buena Vista, and Leola. Mm. These are the only places that prairie chickens still exist in the state. They were Mm. listed as a threatened species in 1979, so they're state threatened. And there's been enormous efforts for the last 80 years, really, to keep them here Mm -hmm. and to avoid extirpation or local extinction from the state. And Mm -hmm. that was the Hammerstrom link. Mm -hmm. They dedicated, really, their lives to um, a lot of different birds, but... um, in particular, the Timpanucus cupidopinatus. Mm. And we are the greater prairie chicken here in Wisconsin. There mm. are lesser birds, mm-hmm. lesser chickens, mm-hmm. and they are in um, like New Mexico and Western Nebraska, states. Western yeah, yeah. states. Mm. So um, Frederick and Fran Hammerstrom, and then Fran went on to write a number of books. So she became renowned as an author as well. Mm-hmm. Um, they've passed. Uh, many years ago, but we still honor them at the festival. Mm -hmm. We bring in a nature writer 
Every mm. year, a nature writer, an author, and this year it's going to be Dr. George Archibald, mm. who is a longtime friend of theirs, mm. and he was one of the co-founders of the International Crane Foundation. Mm. So it's really the whole festival focuses on other birds as well as the prairie chicken. Yeah, yeah, the prairie chicken kind of serves as what's known as an umbrella species or a keystone species because mm -hmm. if you can with if you can um, retain the um, kind of the one that's the bird that's kind of at the, or the species at the, the top of the chain, mm -hmm. so to speak, in terms of habitat needs because mm. they're the most specific. Mm. Then all the other grassland species underneath them can also survive. Mm. So if they're there, mm -hmm. we know that a lot of other important species are also there. Yeah. Um, oh, go ahead. We'll also have at the festival on Saturday, April thirteenth, in the morning. Um, we'll have an oversized prairie chicken. No, oh, cool. Called, we call him Boomin' Bob, mm, and he's mm. a costumed character that the children and the adults love to see uh, appear once a year during the festival. The, uh, great photo ops and, and fun activities. So there will be children's activities. There will be Boomin' Bob. Uh, there's vendors. There's artists. There's um, wildlife photography. You know, and Casey, speakers. let's do this in order for people. Okay. Let's let's go ahead and <laughs> give them much. the details Good here uh, of uh, how this all event this starts and and where it wraps up and everything. Let's start right. How when does the event begin? I imagine around noon or something like. No, well, no, no, it's an no. early event. It's well, an early we event. we will talk about the the precursor to the early early morning, sure. and that is on Monday, <clears throat> April the eighth. Macmillan Library has been a great sponsor of this event and the years and they again this year and they're going to offer a movie um, a, a series of movies at 1 30 and 6 p.m and it's entitled carbon cowboys and mm. i'll let casey talk about yeah. it well it's it's again the festival over time has also implemented a great partnership with the farmers of mill creek mm. out in portage county and they are uh have actually adopted the Paul J. Olson management mm -hmm. of that facility, but the festival gives an opportunity to talk about different farming alternatives, mm -hmm. and that's what this series of shorts is going to um, offer up to people, Carbon Cowboys. They've joined us on the air here before. They're a great organization, great group of people doing some really vital work over there, and that's cool to hear that they're a part of this. That makes sense that they would be, but I didn't hear that part. That's great. Yeah. That's really good. Again, the habitat is, is part of the message that we try and mm -hmm. offer to people, but there's ways we can partner together to make it all work for everyone. Yeah, and, and I'm, I'm so glad that this came up too, and and you you highlighting this, Sharon, because uh, where when it comes to an endangered species, I think we focus on that animal in particular, as we probably should. But it's so important to remember that that animal is part of a chain, and if that animal is out, then it affects the whole chain, which we are a part of. People, I'll just remind <laughs> everybody right. out there. So you know, keeping these animals alive is a good feeling. It feels good. I don't want to say to any of my grand, you know, when I have grandkids one day, I don't want to have to say to them. Them, hey, there was this animal called the prairie chicken we used to have. We don't have anymore. I don't want to have to have that conversation with my grandkids. And the reason we call um, our character, our oversized prairie chicken, Boom and Bob, I'll let Sharon uh, speak to that naming. Well, that gets to our other events. If you are hardy enough and you're willing to meet us at four o'clock in the morning, you go into, you come with all your gear and your wet, your waterproof boot, boots and your flashlight and get warm and please don't drink coffee because mm -hmm. we, we take you out into a prairie chicken blind about mm. four o'clock in the morning. You have to be there before sunrise mm -hmm. and the, you will have the experience of seeing the male prairie chickens boom. Mm. So they make this guttural low volume sound that mm. you can hear for over a mile kind of like mm. <laughs> it's really low and then they flutter they flap they pound their feet they have these air sacs on their side of their head yeah. that are orange and they blow up mm -hmm. and then they have these feathers on the top of their head called pinnae and those become erect and these guys are just nuts mm -hmm. and they dance for hours just to attract you know these females who nonchalantly make their way through the booming grounds <laughs> and look them over and go nah, I don't think so yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a story of my life no. uh, and, <laughs> but the boys dance their hearts out they do to yeah. win a heart yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it's really, 
it's very it's mm. heartwarming mm-hmm. to see them try so very hard and it's just so such a colorful extravagant ex- display and how often in life do you have a chance to experience these things in real time and and be in the moment of them you know i, I know nowadays you can catch so many things online there's a huge difference of all of your senses taking in a moment and just seeing something online there's a gigantic difference of that and regionally you know not a lot happens in early april yeah, and yeah. we're not against a lot of competition Petition for things to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so that calendar uh, date is usually around that early, like this year it's April 8th through the 14th. It varies a little, but typically it's that that time period in April. Mm-hmm. So if you can't make it this year, you can come next year. It's a good thing to plan ahead for, yeah. yeah. Um, there will be vendors down there as well? So, yeah. So we have different sites to go into observation blinds. We have sites available. Well, well there's no sites available now, but mm-hmm. <clears throat> you can always email. Well, we have our email site as well mm-hmm. um, to see if there's any spots because sometimes people cancel. They get mm-hmm. the information. They're like, uh, on second thought, I don't want to mm-hmm. do it. Well, we as have Casey sites. said, maybe for next year if right. you can't this year. So we have sites at the Buena Vista Wildlife Area mm-hmm. in Portage County and at the Paul J. Olson Wildlife Area. Mm-hmm. But the uh, festival events itself, the breakfast on Saturday, April 13th, will be held at the Aaron Event Barn. That's where our vendors will be. That's where our presenters will be. Mm-hmm. And then in the afternoon, Dr. Archibald will be here at McMillan Library again on April the 13th. Mm-hmm. A big thank you to McMillan Library oh, yeah. uh, working with the Huge. We love our friends over at McMillan. Yeah. Um, and and, and uh, Dr. Archibald for doing this too. Oh, uh, you mentioned he was a friend of theirs? Yeah, mm-hmm. Lifetime friend. Mm-hmm. Um, when Fran and um, Frederick were recognized and got the Good Egg Award, um, he was mm-hmm. also present at that. That's cool. See them hmm. receive it. So. And he's an amazing speaker. He's like the Pied Piper people who will just kind of follow and his, him everywhere. And everywhere. his <laughs> collection of stories is called My Life with Cranes. Hmm. So as I mentioned, the Hammerstrom Fund for Writing is at Encourage Foundation. Mm -hmm. And we started that the year that Fran passed, and uh, it grew to $10,000. So now we use the dividend funds from that annual um, fund to bring in uh, a wildlife nature. Mm-hmm. Author. That's really cool. That's and that is a great way to do that too. Hmm. Well, we want to encourage more writing about yeah about the um, concerns we all have mm-hmm. about the environment. I forgot to mention that we also have a bus tour that morning. That is completely booked, mm-hmm. but we have um, two wonderful wildlife biologists, uh, Stan Skutek, retired from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and Susan Voss, who mm-hmm. works over at Fort McCoy. Mm-hmm. Excellent grassland biologists who will lead that birding tour. Mm-hmm. It gives you such great, like, a, it's one thing to have a good tour guide. It's another to have one that's so well informed yeah. and really knows their stuff like that. Well, and um, Dan O'Connell from Portage County could not be with us today, but he and Sharon have really are the co-facilitators of all of this craziness. <laughs> <laughs> a big thank you to Dan. Uh, hopefully next you. time he can join us. And, and then thank you to all of you for doing this and the work that you're doing on this. Um, it's greatly appreciated, and I know the birds really appreciate it. <laughs> We're speaking with Casey Martin and Sharon Schwab about the Wisconsin Prairie Chicken Festival 2024 and wanted to be sure to mention the speakers that are going to be a part of this event, ladies. Yeah, thank you very much. So we've got um, some, uh, we've got a really nice setup for, um, <clears throat> excuse me, for that day. We have um, one of the things that people might really enjoy is um, Amber Eschenbach is bringing a live kestrel. Ooh. Kestrel is like other people might know it as a sparrowhawk. Mm-hmm. So, of course, they are really dependent on grassland. So she's yeah. going to bring along a live kestrel and mm-hmm. give a presentation on that. Ashley Steinke will be there from the Audubon Society. Lisa Kardash from uh, the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources. Dan O'Connell and Tracy Arnold from Portage County will speak about their um, youth education program. Mm. Um, Heather Dowdery may be speaking from Pheasants Forever about programs that are available to farmers to sign up for so from some of their private lands. Mm. And then uh, we'll have a representative from the, probably John Aaron from the Farmers of Mill Creek. Mm. And I think that's everybody. I Very so. cool. Hopefully, I didn't miss anybody. <clears throat> it's a great group of people, and a lot of info, a lot of great information, and very good speakers. By the way, all these individuals are very charismatic and do a really nice job with these speeches. And Lisa will talk about kind of an update on what the. 
prairie chicken population is and mm. what the status is right now. That's a real. That's really good information. That's great. We also have some wonderful vendors. I don't know if you want to hear about yeah, those. Yeah, definitely. So we have um, some. We not only in addition to vendors, we have some educational um, ex- exhibitions there. We have the Farmers of Mill Creek Council, the Ice Age Trail Alliance, the Nature Conservancy, North Central Conservancy Trust, Pheasants Forever, and then we have some vendors. Heather Baker from HB Studio. We have Deb Bilker, she has a children's book. Joe Reeder, who's also on our planning committee and doesn't want, and is, is, is heading up the website this year, does some amazing photography, mm. and he'll have his prints and his cards. And Sue Tupper, who did a biography of Fred and Fran Hammerstrom. Mm-hmm. And Bird City. Uh, and Bird City, I apologize. Yeah, very Sarah cool. Kubishek is also on our committee, and oh, yes. Yeah just done a lot of things we're also going to have a silent auction oh very we nice. did that last year as well and um really reasonably priced mm-hmm. starting bids and hopefully they exceed and go over overboard but yeah. um it's another way for people to get some items and um and a variety of items absolutely food as well as art as well as um functional things and mm-hmm. nature related things oh we should mention the food we're going to have a great breakfast on saturday mm. and um and that's being uh, done by kathy Havitz with mm. the chatterbox cafe it oh, does a nice, nice job for us yeah we well, shout out to chatterbox they do yeah. a lot of great work they in this do. community great catering and uh, along with all of this, this event doesn't happen without some great sponsors. And I do want to let those sponsors know I put the ladies on the spot here uh, okay. when, when I bring in this up. But we do want to thank them. Okay. So we've got Clean Green Action, mm-hmm. Bird City. We have the Hammerstrom Fund for Riding underneath, in, within the Encourage Foundation, Portage County Planning and Zoning, the Farmers of Mill Creek Council, WFHR. Thank you very much. Pheasants Forever, Dane County Conservation League, and the Wisconsin Rapids Convention and Visitors mm-hmm. Bureau. And I hope I didn't forget anything. Uh, all great people, all yeah. great individuals, and, and uh, all people that really believe in this and believe in this cause and believe in how important this is. And I, I, I'd like to just uh, take a note, too, to, um, you know, I'm a transplant. I, I've been in this state for about 20-some years, and, and uh, my children were born here and everything. And if there's one thing I learned about Wisconsinites, Wisconsinites are proud of being from Wisconsin. Take a lot of pride in being Wisconsinites, and I love that, and I think that's great. One of the things, one of the ways to show they show your pride, and Wisconsinites do, is the history of your state, the animals in your state, the na- the the nature in your state. Enjoying that and supporting it, and and keeping it around for other generations. That's what this event is all doing: is is keeping these things around for future generations, preserving these this land, preserving these animals, and helping so much of this to happen. Um, I think I would think if you're a proud Wisconsinite, you want to be a part of this event. You you want to be in the, involved in this and enjoy this great event. And um, Casey, you had a really nice way to kind of wrap things up. I, I thought that was very noteworthy. So I'm going to let you do that. Well, one of the um, after Fran and Frederick had passed earlier, but when Fran died in the 90, late 90s, um, her daughter Elva Paulson. Uh, Hammerstrom Paulson is also a renowned um, nature and wildlife artist out in Oregon. But she compiled reminiscent stories from various people that knew the Hammerstroms over the decades, over their lives, and either interacted with them in a birding sense or an ecological sense. So at the back of the book, the collection of stories is called The Hammerstrom Stories, Mm -hmm. Recollections of the Life of Hammy and Fran Hammerstrom, Hmm. I found a 1947 paper that Frederick had written talking about water pollution, conservation's most urgent problem. So in 1947, he wrote, life cannot exist without water. All plants and animals, including man himself, depend upon water. Water made our industrial system possible. Water is used in the processes of manufacture and as a means of carrying off industrial wastes. An important part of our food supply comes directly from oceans, rivers, and lakes. Water holds for us tremendous aesthetic, social, and recreational values. So 1947, I mean, a a friend of mine, Dan Egan, wrote a whole book about water on the Great Lakes. Mm. 
recently, like in yeah, the last couple yeah. of years. So to, to show how long this has been a topic, you exactly. know, and how, wow, that's really. And how future thinking they were. Yes. Yeah. And then the other paper was done by both Frederick and Fran in 1957, mm. ecological patterning as a tool in wildlife management. Wildlife management generally means the management of habitat as much as the management of the animals themselves. Mm. Habitat management means without which wildlife cannot live. It happens sometimes that existing land management quite inadvertently produces both commercial crops, whether measured in bushels, pounds, or board feet, and excellent crops of wildlife too. So again, hmm. yeah. they were they were they knew the importance. Well, and they also studied under um, Aldo Leopold. Aldo oh, Leopold. Yeah, yeah. Mm. They were hmm. Leopold students, wow. and Fran was the only female student of his. Hmm. So, oh wow, that's interesting. Yes. Huh. So again, more of our historical yeah. reflection. Well, in talking about how how long this has been a topic, how long this has been important to uh, to uh, to us in this area in the state. Uh, that's a thank you so much for that. That was really good. Well, Fran and and Hammy used to lure people up to their farm property in Plainfield. And before they'd take them out birding, um, or they'd take them out birding and bring them back and they'd crack eggs. Mm. They always served up a great breakfast. It was one of the ways that they got people personally invested. Mm. Mm. That's really cool. As we're wrapping up, ladies, let's tell people again uh, when uh, the event is beginning and where the event is gonna be taking place. Well, it, it officially begins with the kickoff at Macmillan Library on April 8th. Uh, blinds are, uh, observation blinds are occurring between the 12th and the 14th, but the main event is on April the 13th, beginning at 4 o'clock in the morning with the observation blinds, 6 o'clock in the morning in the bus. But if you're just coming for breakfast and all the morning speakers, et cetera, et cetera, you can come about 8 o'clock and breakfast will be beginning. And then be sure to catch Dr. George Archibald in the afternoon at 3.30. And the silent auction ends at 10.30 at the event barn that morning. Mm -hmm. so. Keep in mind, you can find out more about this event and uh, follow along with it throughout the year on their Facebook page. Just type in your search bar, Wisconsin uh, WI Prairie Chicken Festival, WI Prairie Chicken Festival, and their new website you want to check out as well, wisprairiechickens.org. And that's w W I S with a uh, plural chickens in there. So, wisprairiechickens.org. Be sure to check that out. And we're looking forward to talking with you guys again already. Looking forward to this event. Thank you to you, to the sponsors, to all the volunteers, and everyone. Everybody that helps make this event happen year in and year out. We appreciate you. Thank you for the time and thank you both. Thanks, James. Have a great time at the event. Uh, enjoy yourselves. Thank you. Well, Lamar Midday Magazine coming up for you right here on WFHR, locally grown radio.